Sir Lloyd William Matthews, the 7th of March 1850 to the 11th of October 1901, was a British naval officer, politician and abolitionist. Matthews joined the Royal Navy as a cadet at the age of 13 and progressed through the ranks to lieutenant. He was involved with the Third Anglo-Ashanti War of 1873-4, afterwards being stationed in East Africa for the suppression of the slave trade. In 1877 he was seconded from the navy to Sultan Barash of Zanzibar in order to form a European-style army. He would remain in the employment of the government of Zanzibar for the rest of his life. His army quickly reached 6,300 men and was used in several expeditions to suppress the slave trade and rebellions against the Zanzibar government. Matthews retired from the Royal Navy in 1881 and was appointed Brigadier General of Zanzibar. There followed more expeditions to the African mainland, including a failed attempt to stop German expansion in East Africa. In October 1891 Matthews was appointed First Minister to the Zanzibar government, a position in which he was "...irremovable by the Sultan". During this time Matthews was a keen abolitionist and promoted this cause to the Sultans he worked with. This resulted in the prohibiting of the slave trade in Zanzibar's dominions in 1890 and the abolition of slavery in 1897. Matthews was appointed the British Consul General for East Africa in 1891 but declined to take up the position, remaining in Zanzibar instead. Matthews and his troops also played a key role in the ending of the Anglo-Zanzibar War of 1896 which erupted out of an attempt to bypass the requirement that new sultans must be vetted by the British Consul. During his time as First Minister Matthews continued to be involved with the military and was part of two large campaigns, one to Witu and another to MWELE. Matthews was decorated by several governments, receiving appointments as a Companion of the Order of St. Michael and St. George, Companion of the Order of the Bath and as a Knight Commander of the Order of St. Michael and St. George from the British government and membership in the Prussian Order of the Crown. Zanzibar also rewarded him and he was a member of the Grand Order of Hammondi and a first-class member of the Order of the Brilliant Star of Zanzibar. Matthews died of malaria in Zanzibar on of October 1901. Early life and career Matthews was born at Funchal on Madeira on 7 March 1850. His father, Captain William Matthews was Welsh, and his mother Jane Wallace Penfold, was the daughter of William Penfold and Sarah Gilbert. Her sister, Augusta Jane Robley Ney Penfold was the author of a famous book about the flora and fauna of Madeira, which is now in the Natural History Museum. Matthews became a cadet of the Royal Navy in 1863 and was appointed a midshipman on 23 September 1866. From 1868 he was stationed in the Mediterranean but his first active service was during the Third Anglo-Ashanti War of 1873-4 where he qualified for the campaign medal. He was promoted to lieutenant on 31 March 1874. On 27 August 1875 Matthews was posted to HMS London, a depot ship and the Royal Navy headquarters for East Africa, to assist in the suppression of the slave trade in the area. Whilst on board he drilled his own troops, captured several slave dows and was commended for his actions by the Admiralty. <laughs> <laughs> Commander-in-Chief of Zanzibar In August 1877, Matthews was seconded from the Navy to Sultan Barash of Zanzibar to form a European-style army which could be used to enforce Zanzibar's control over its mainland possessions. The army had traditionally been composed entirely of Arabs and Persians but Matthews opened up recruitment to the African majority on the island and had 300 recruits in training by the end of the year. In addition, Matthews employed some unorthodox recruitment methods such as purchasing slaves from their masters, using inmates from the prison and recruiting from Africans rescued from the slavers. In June 1877, at the instigation of John Kirk, the explorer and friend of the Sultan, the British government sent a shipment of 500 modern rifles and ammunition as a gift with which to arm the troops. Matthews introduced a new uniform for the troops consisting of a red cap, short black jackets and white trousers for the enlisted ranks and dark blue frock coats and trousers with gold and silver lace for the Arab officers. 
the latter was possibly modelled on the Royal Navy officer's uniform with which he was familiar. The army grew quickly. By the 1880s, Matthews would command 1,300 men, his forces eventually numbering 1,000 regulars and 5,000 irregulars. One of the first tasks for the new army was to suppress the smuggling of slaves from Pangani on the mainland to the island of Pemba, north of Zanzibar. The troops completed this mission, capturing several slavers and hindering the trade. Matthews retired from the Royal Navy in June 1881 and was appointed Brigadier General of Zanzibar. In 1880, the Sultan dispatched a military force under Matthews to bring his unruly African mainland territories under control. Matthews' expedition was initially intended to reach Unyanyembe, but his men refused to march inland and, when made to do so, deserted in large numbers. The expedition ended instead at Mamboya where a 60-man garrison was established. This had been reduced to a mere handful of men by the mid-1880s but the expedition proved that the Sultan was serious about maintaining control of all of his possessions. Matthew's men were also involved in several expeditions to halt the land-based slave trade which had developed once the seas became too heavily policed for the traders. In 1881 Matthew's old vessel, HMS London, was captained by Charles J. Brownrigg. This vessel and her crew made several patrols aimed at hindering the slave trade using smaller steamboats for the actual pursuits and captures. On December 3, 1881, they caught up with a slave dhow captained by Hindi bin Hattam. This dhow had around 100 slaves on board and was transporting them between Pemba and Zanzibar. Captain Brownrigg led a boarding party to release the slaves but Bin Hattam's men then attacked the sailors, killing Brownrigg and his party before sailing away. Matthews led a force to Wete on Pemba and, after a short battle, took a mortally wounded Bin Hattam prisoner before returning to Zanzibar. Matthews returned to the African mainland territories once more in 1884 when he landed with a force which intended to establish further garrisons there to dissuade German territorial claims. This attempt ultimately failed when five German warships steamed into Zanzibar town harbour and threatened the Sultan into signing away the territories which would later form German East Africa. Further territories were ceded to the German East Africa Company in 1888 but unrest amongst the locals against them prevented them from taking control and Matthews was dispatched with 100 men to restore order. Finding around 8,000 people gathered against the German administrators Matthews was forced to return with his men to Zanzibar. He landed once again with more troops but found himself subject to death threats and that his troops would not obey his orders and so returned again to Zanzibar. <laughs> <laughs> First Minister In October 1891, upon the formation of the first constitutional government in Zanzibar, Matthews was appointed first minister, despite some hostility from Sultan Ali bin Said. In this capacity Matthews was irremovable by the Sultan, and answerable only to the Sultan and the British consul. His position was so strong that one missionary on the island is quoted as saying that his powers defied analytical examination, and that Matthews really could say L'état est moi. I am the state. Matthews was also known as the strong man of Zanzibar. The principal departments of government were mostly run by Britons or British Indians and Matthews' approval was required before they could be removed from office. Matthews was rewarded by the Zanzibar government for his role with his appointment as a first-class member of the Order of the Brilliant Star of Zanzibar, which he was granted license by Queen Victoria to accept and wear on 17 May 1886. Matthews used his position to suppress slavery in the country and in 1889 convinced the Sultan to issue a decree purchasing the freedom of all slaves who had taken refuge in his dominions and, from 1890, the prohibiting the slave trade. On 1 February 1891 Matthews was appointed Her Majesty's Commissioner and Consul General to the British sphere of influence in East Africa. He never took up the post and instead chose to remain in Zanzibar. Matthews was rewarded for his service in Zanzibar by the British government which appointed him a Companion of the Order of St. Michael and St. George in 1880 and a Companion of the Order of the Bath on 24 May 1889. Despite becoming renowned in East Africa as a man who ran a fair administration and was strict with criminals, unhappiness with effective British rule and his halting of the slave trade led some Arabs to petition the Sultan for his removal in 1892. 
In 1893 Matthews purchased the island of Changu for the government. He intended it to be used as a prison but it never housed prisoners and was instead used to quarantine yellow fever cases before its present use as a conservation area for giant tortoises. Matthews was appointed a Knight Commander of the Order of St. Michael and St. George in 1894. He was also awarded membership of the Order of the Crown by the German government. Matters came to a head when Khalid bin Barash attempted to take control of the palace in Zanzibar town upon the death of his uncle in August 1896, despite failing to gain the consent of the British consul there. Matthews opposed this succession and, with British agreement, called up 900 soldiers in an attempt to prevent it. This situation eventually led to the Anglo-Zanzibar War and Matthews, with the support of Admiral Harry Rawson and five vessels of the Royal Navy, bombarded the palace and secured the end of Khalid's administration. Matthews helped to arrange the succession of a pro-British sultan, Hamoud bin Muhammad, as Khalid's successor. Matthews continued his reforms after the war, abolishing slavery in 1897 and establishing new farms to grow produce using Western techniques. He was appointed a member of the Grand Order of Hamondi of Zanzibar and was permitted to accept and wear the decoration on 25 August 1897. Military expeditions MWELE In addition to the smaller scale expeditions described earlier, Matthews embarked on two much larger expeditions to the African mainland during his tenure as First Minister, the first at MWELE. The initial rebellion in the area had been led by Mbarak bin Rashid at Ghazi, which Matthews had put down with 1,200 men in 1882. However, in 1895 Mbarak's nephew, Mbarak bin Rashid, refused to acknowledge the appointment of a new leader at Takuungu. This led to open rebellion at Conjuro in February of that year when the younger Mbarak attacked Zanzibari troops under Arthur Rakes, one of Matthews' officers. Matthews was part of an Anglo-Zanzibari expedition sent to quell it, which consisted of 310 British sailors, 50 Royal Marines, 54 Sudanese and 164 Zanzibari troops. Conjuro was destroyed and the leaders fled to Ghazi where the older Mbarak failed to turn them over. Another force, under Admiral Rawson, with 400 British marines and sailors, was sent after them. This further expedition failed to capture the ringleaders and a third expedition was organized by Rawson with 220 sailors, 80 marines, 60 Sudanese and 50 Zanzibaris, which destroyed MWELE. During the latter action Matthews was wounded in the shoulder. Witu. Following the death of a German logger who had been operating illegally, the Sultan of Zanzibar and the British government dispatched an expedition on 20 October 1890 to bring the Sultan of Witu to justice. Nine warships and three transports carrying 800 sailors and marines, 150 Imperial British East Africa Company Indian police, 200 Zanzibari and 50 Sudanese troops were sent, defeating the Sultan and establishing a British protectorate. The IBA was given control of the area and established a force of 250 Indian police to maintain the peace. The police were withdrawn in July 1893 following threats of violence from the new Sultan of Witu, Oman, and another expedition was dispatched to the region. This consisted of three warships, HMS Blanche, HMS Sparrow and the Zanzibari ship HHS Barrower. The latter carried Matthews with 125 Askaris and 50 Sudanese under Brigadier General Hatch of the Zanzibar Army. Matthews and an escort force went to Witu where, on 31 July, they removed the flag of the Ibia Company and replaced it with the red flag of Zanzibar, before destroying several villages and causing Oman to retreat into the forests. The British troops then withdrew, having suffered heavily from malaria, but the Sudanese and Zanzibari troops remained. A further expedition was sent of 140 sailors and 85 other troops but Oman died soon after and a more pliable sultan, Omar bin Hamid, was appointed to govern on behalf of Zanzibar, bringing the affair to a close. In return for this action, Matthews received the British East and West Africa Campaign Medal. Topic. 
Topic: Later life. Matthews died of malaria in Zanzibar on the 11th of October 1901 and was buried with full military honors in the British cemetery outside Zanzibar town. His successor as first minister was A.S. Rogers. Changu Island, which Matthews bought for a prison, now has a restaurant named in his honor and also a church. Matthews House, at the western end of Zanzibar town, is also named for him. <laughs>